This program is a part of a series of studies that our Pastor Gion has prepared for you. Welcome to Victory Church Odessa. Our goal is to exalt the name of our Lord Jesus and to encourage you to develop more faith by reflecting on the Bible. We hope you will enjoy this program. Now let me introduce you to our Pastor Gian. Gospel Parallels, Episode 26, May 10th, 2023. This is the Bible study with Victory Church from Odessa, Texas. And I am Gian. Hello, dear friend. Welcome one more time to another episode. Gospel Parallels is a very interesting study that we have done for a while. And is about the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we are going in a parallel way, switching lanes from one to the other. So if you want to see more of this and the rest of our productions, go to the website, vchurch.us. From there, you can connect with the rest of our platforms on Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire Stick TV, and Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo. The audio platforms start with the podcast and Spotify, Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, and my favorite Victory Radio. Remember, Victory Radio is the new thing. <laughs> the new thing. I am very happy to be here with you, dear friends. Today, I want to dedicate this particular Bible study to one of my faithful friends, a beautiful friend from Virginia in Newport News or Hampton. I can't remember the city now. Jack and G Jack Johnson and Helen Johnson, dear friends of ours, Tracy and I say hello to both of you. A big hug. Mwah! Kisses to you guys. We miss you. And uh, I hope that you will continue having great life and blessings, good health, success for your family in all areas. Amen. So now, let's go and evaluate what happened last week. In our previous episode, we studied the... the the conversation the Lord Jesus had with the woman in Samaria, that was related only in the Gospel of John. Today we will continue with some other things that happened in Galilee. It's called the ministry in Galilee. And actually the four gospel, Gospels talk about that. So the reading comes from the easy to read version. And we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, guide us through this study. Amen. Matthew 4. 13 through 17. Jesus did not stay in Nazareth. He went to live in Capernaum, a town near Lake Galilee, in the near area Zebulun and Naphtali. He did this to give full meaning to what the prophet Isaiah said. Listen, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, lands by the road that goes to the sea, the area past the Jordan River, a Galilee, where those from other nations live. The people who live in spiritual darkness have seen a great light. The light has shined for those who live in the land that is a dark, is, is as dark as grave. From that time, Jesus began to tell people his message, change your hearts and lives because God's kingdom is now very near. Mark 1, 14, b through 15. Jesus went into Galilee and told the good news from God. He said, the right time is now here. God's kingdom is very near. Change your hearts and lives and believe the good news. Luke 4, 14b and 15. Stories about Jesus spread all over the area around Galilee. He began to teach in the synagogues and everyone praised him. John 4:43 through 46a. Two days later, Jesus left and went to Galilee. Jesus has said before too that a prophet is not respected in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the people there welcomed him. They had been at the Passover festival in Jerusalem and had seen everything he did there. Jesus went to visit Cana in, in Galilee again. Cana is where he had changed the water into wine. 
One of the king's important officials lived in the city of Capernaum. This man's son was sick. The first thing that I can see in these passages is the fact that the Lord Jesus is always on the move. <laughs> He's going from one town to the other, from one town to the other, because it's exactly the way that he operates, you know. He is not stagnant. The Lord Jesus, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, they are not just sitting in their, in their recliners just thinking, oh, this is a great life. I like to be here just doing nothing. Uh -uh. <laughs> Maybe you think that way. Nothing wrong with resting. But I want you to see this. If the Lord is on the move, you need to be on the move. Think about this. There is future ahead of you. Think about your life. There are things that you still can do, my friend. Never is too late not to go to school or not to invest in new adventures or even simple things like traveling or going to visit a friend in the same town. The important thing is to understand that the Lord God is always on the move and you should be that way. Not necessarily physically, but you can still move when you are learning, when you are just exp exploring new things, more knowledge, etc., And particularly when you are, like the Lord Jesus, reaching out to people. How important is that? Don't forget that. Now, here we read that he chose Capernaum as a hometown, new hometown, a place to live. He decided to be there in Capernaum. And you know what is interesting? That actually the prophet Isaiah in the chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, talks about this fulfillment, this prophecy that was fulfilled by the Lord Jesus. There are many prophecies and that, that uh, they were written by the prophets in the Old Testament that they were fulfilled through the life of the Lord Jesus. That is another very good thing for you to know because when people are arguing and telling you things that the Bible is not true or that Jesus this and that, you, you just... Ignore what they say because we have so many proof about how truthful the Word of God is and particularly when it's about the Lord Jesus, the fulfillment of the prophecies. So here is talking about the area of Zebulun and the area of Naphtali. So let's just start with the case of Zebulun. Do you know that Zebulun actually and Naphtali as well, they both come from the same father. Jacob, that's right. Jacob actually was the son of Isaac, as you know, the son of Abraham. So we have the patriarchs here, Abraham, Isaac, and now Jacob. Jacob, at some point, his name was changed to Israel. And that is why the 12 sons of Jacob are called the tribes of Israel, because Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So one of those sons was Zebulun, and the other is Naphtali. But let's, let's focus on, on Zebulun for a moment. It's interesting when you think about the story of uh, this patriarch, Jacob, because, believe it or not, he had four women. And all the children from these four women were blessed by God. It's one of those things that are It's one of those things that is kind of difficult to comprehend in today's world because we know that at this moment in life is not exactly what we do. You know, you, you have, you as a husband, you have your wife and you have your children uh, blessed on that marriage. But for whatever reason, we will never understand this until we go to heaven and then we ask the Lord, okay, God, I need an explanation. Why is it that Jacob could have four women and, I, and I'm not allowed to do that. <laughs> you can ask that question to the good Lord. I don't have an answer. The only answer that I have is that if it's in the Bible and it's part of the narrations that we read in the book of Genesis and it's biblical and it's blessed by God, it's because it's blessed by God. Period. So, in my view, I, I have nothing to argue about that. 
I accept the Bible as it is, and I know there are translations and interpretations and all that, but the truths are there, and there are truths here. It's very interesting when you study the life of Jacob because he himself was actually tricky <laughs> because, in fact, he did something wrong to his own brother, Isa, and yet Isaac gave him the blessing, and uh, here is Jacob now running in the desert looking for a solution for his life, and he finds there this beautiful woman, Rachel. He he is so in love with her, and uh, the father-in-law, he tricked him, gave him Leah, rather than gave him, giving him <laughs> Rachel the night of the wedding. And, uh, well, the story is that eventually he needed to work another seven years to, to get Rachel as a wife as well. So now he has two wives. They are sisters. <laughs> That's a weird thing, right? And now... There is a moment when actually these girls, they have maids and they gave the maids to Jacob to have sex with him. And as a result, there are more children. Those are the 12 <laughs> sons of Israel. That is how the 12 tribes of Israel begin. It's a strange story, my friend. Again, the only thing that I can tell you about that is if it is blessed by God, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But there is something interesting that I can tell you is that I can see that actually from the time of Adam and Eve, and then you see the story of Noah and uh, Abraham actually with Sarah, etc. You always find this human thing throughout all the stories of the Bible. In the uh, well, believe it or not, it makes me feel good about myself because I am aware of my own mistakes, you know? I am aware of my own imperfections and my sins and my past. And, you know, not that I have been a criminal or anything like that. Don't, don't think that. Simply my imperfections in life, you know? And I think, well, there is nobody really perfect in the Bible other than the Lord Jesus. Now, the good thing is all these stories in the Bible that we read, always take us to a good point, a good conclusion how people changed. Because everybody can change, you know? So, here is how the, these two guys listed in the prophecy of Isaac, I'm sorry, of Isaiah chapter 9, Zebulun and Naphtali came to this moment in the story of the gospel. Because Leah had this son from Jacob. Zebulun. And then you can find that in Genesis chapter 30, verses 19 through 21. Leah is the mother of Zebulun. And the reason why he was named that way, because in Hebrew, that means praise or honor. That's nice, right? Now, get this. One of the gates in the temple was named after Zebulun. You can find that in Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 33. The gate of Zebulun. It is interesting to realize also that uh, in the book of Judges, in the chapter 5, there is a woman that is a special woman, Deborah, and uh, she was a leader for the Israelites. That is years, years later, okay? But Deborah actually sang a song with Barak, and he's not the former president, I promise you that. <laughs> it's just another guy there. And do you know what they do? They, they are singing songs to the good Lord. Deborah was a tremendous leader. In the right time, one day I'm going to study with you more about Deborah. But it's an interesting thing because there in the chapter 5, in the verse 18, she says something about Zebulon and Naphtali fighting to protect Israel. Isn't it cool? Those two guys that were mentioned by Isaiah, now here in Judges 5, are also mentioned. What about Naphtali? Naphtali is uh, actually the son of Rachel, kind of, because it was not Rachel the natural mother. Rachel actually was able to have children, eventually. 
And though those two children are the last one from Jacob, which are Joseph and Benjamin. But Rachel actually had Naphtali through her maid servant, Bilhah. In Genesis chapter 30, verses 1 through 8, you read the story. And, and precisely the name of Naphtali was uh, the Hebrew word, my struggle. Interesting, right? Rachel was struggling because she couldn't have children. And then she said one day, well, here is my maid. Come on, Jacob, take her and give me a child through her which is part of the traditions back in those days. It was a cultural thing, and it was okay with them, period. Not that today we will do that. Now, there is also a gate named Naphtali in the chapter 48 of Ezekiel. You know what else is interesting about this prophecy of uh, Isaiah? Is that he says that they will go to this land where were people from other nations, which are called Gentiles in the Bible. Basically, they are no Jews, right? So, this section that we just read, it has to do basically with this prophecy of these two guys. I gave you some information about Deborah. It is very interesting. Women, come on, you can do it too. You are strong. You can fight for your family and your community. And, uh, well, interesting to see that the the Lord Jesus was there for everybody. And uh, he never had an issue with people from other nations, Gentiles. You know, the Lord was open to to reach out. Still today, especially, we need to do that. Not having any discrimination for anybody. Remembering always that what we need to see is there is darkness where there is no gospel. So therefore, we who carry the light of our Lord Jesus, we need to bring that light to other people, those that are in darkness. Remember this, my friend. You know someone that today is in darkness, and you need to reach out and share with love the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which is the message? This is how he is ending this thing, saying, change your hearts. Change your hearts. You know, the Lord Jesus went to Galilee and uh, he said, you know, prophets are not appreciated here in, in their own town. He, he knew that, right? And he went to Cana too, where he changed the water into wine. He was there, but he was delivering the same message. Change your hearts because God's kingdom is near. The kingdom of heaven is near. Today, my friend, I want you to know the kingdom of God is near you. you. You might say, where? I don't see anything. Well, it's near your heart. It's near your heart. The power of the Holy Spirit is coming upon you. And all that you need to do is just to embrace the love of God, remembering that if you are in darkness, the light is in our Lord Jesus Christ. If you have never given your life to the Lord, you can say today, I want that light. I want the love of God in my heart. It's very simple to just say, thank you, God. Love me more. Bless me more. Save me today in the name of Jesus. You take that truth, embrace it, cherish it, and say, from now on, I'm going to do what is right. Changing our hearts. That's the kingdom of God. That's the power of the kingdom of God. Now, if you are a believer... Remember that there are many people in the darkness today. Don't abandon them. Don't just say, well, it's not my problem. Don't do that. Always remember that you can reach out. The reading came today from these passages, the ministry in Galilee. And this is what I have for you today in Gospel Parallels, episode 26. I want to close telling you this. Very important. You heard me. Probably you learned something new. Now, when you finish watching this program, what if you take five minutes to pray? The same Lord God Almighty that was with with Adam and Eve, with Noah, with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Zebulun, and Naphtali, the same God that was with Isaiah, the same God Lord Almighty that was with the Lord Jesus, is with you. All that you need to do is believe. So when as soon as I finish here, 
I want to invite you. Stop your device. Close your eyes. Put your hands together like this. And with your eyes closed, to focus on what you're going to say, talk to God, the Lord God Almighty. The Lord Jesus told us, when you pray, pray to the Father, God the Father. In my name, he said, the power of the Holy Spirit will be with you, my friend. And believe that whatever you say to him, he hears you. The Lord hears the prayers of his people. If you need to ask for forgiveness, ask for forgiveness. If you need help with your money, with your work, with your family, with your health, just pray and say, Lord God, help me. Talk to him. He listens to your prayers. And I would love to hear from you one day. Send me an email and say, Guess what, Gian? I prayed that day when I watched this message. And today I know the Lord heard me because this is the result of my prayer. I know the Lord listens. Go ahead, okay? Take care. Bye. Victory Radio is now available 24-7. Visit our website, www.victoryradio.us. Great music, positive messages, optimism to keep you company while you work, or when you drive, or when you are at home cooking. Faith is what you need. Faith comes when you hear the right thing. Victory Radio is the new thing. Find us on the website, www.victoryradio.us. Have a great rest of your day. If you own a Roku TV, a Roku TV device, an Apple TV device, or own a Fire Stick, we invite you to install the Gion TV app. With the Gion TV app installed on your TV, you will be able to watch all the videos from the comfort of your home and be inspired with our programs. Enjoy music, inspirational videos, Bible teachings, and beautiful videos that will keep your tank of faith full all the time at the touch of a button. Remember G on TV. Receive the inspiration to achieve your calling in life. By G and Carlo Vitutoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy, until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Welcome to this website, MyNewMentor.com. Here you will find the tools to establish a direct communication with your new mentor, Gian. Get the available spot on Gian's schedule and set your appointment to have an audio or video call via Skype with Gian. Do you like new movies, new books, new music? Go to MyGianCarlo.com. There is a new album, Adore, 10 songs. I wrote the songs and I sing those songs with a wonderful band of musicians and singers. If you sign up in MyGianCarlo.com, I will give you one song for free. Take advantage of this free song and enjoy this wonderful production. The blessings of God are going to come to you when you are listening to the right thing, God's Word. You can find us in all of these platforms. Search for Gian TV on Apple TV, Roku TV, and Fire TV. Do you prefer a podcast? Find us too. And remember Victory Radio 24-7. The kingdom of God is near. Thank you for investing time with Victory Church Odessa. 
feel free to subscribe to our channel here on this platform. Also, you can go to our website, vchurch.us, to connect with the rest of the platforms where you can follow us. Our address is 2400 West 81st Street, Odessa, Texas, 79764. Our Sunday worship service begins at 10 a.m. Our phone number is 432-614-9798. Our email address is info at vchurch.us. Feel free to share this program with your family and friends. Until next time, we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Many blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus.